Hello again, our most developed student. A welcome again to the uh, last part of these lessons and I'm doing the second revision. And in this question, we are looking at work, energy and efficiency. As I said, I did initially teach on this module, but now I'm looking at the previous papers. Now, if you haven't subscribed, I will encourage you to subscribe to our channel and then ensure that the notification bell is turned on. I always laugh at my child who always says we need to subscribe. You know, subscribe, not subscribe. Subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. It is uh, very important for you to subscribe so that you can be notified whenever there is um, new videos. Now, let's come back to this question. Uh, the first part, 4.1, similar to the previous one, define power. We said power was the, what? the rate of doing work you know we have looked at these definitions but now let's look at 4.2 it says a man is pushing uh, a trolley so there is a man who's pushing a trolley with an applied force uh, f a f applied of 500 newtons and the trolley is moving with a velocity v of 10 meters per second now calculate the power required to maintain the movement of the trolley Okay, not difficult, the power. Now you need to know the formula for power. Remember, power is work done over time taken, which is called work done, remember, is force times distance over time taken. And we say this distance over time, V is distance over time. But they'll be giving you the formulas. You have this formula for power. Power is force times V is there in the formulas. So this is the one which was needed because we got the velocity. So power is equal to force. They told us what is the force? 500 Newton and the velocity is 10. So it's simpler question, which is 500 times 10. It's simple what? 5,000 watt. It's 5,000 watts or what? Divide by 1,000, it's 5 kilo watt. I think I don't know how many marks this was uh, two marks is very basic and it's not really requiring much it was just a basic question 4.3 here let's look at it it says a crane with a, a crane is hoisting a lot of 50 kg okay there is the M for the mass onto a platform which is 15 meters high it requires an input energy of 8050 joules now calculate the efficiency of the crane a different question now so when they ask you such a question efficiency the first thing is to remind yourself of the formula remember efficiency is output in this case it will be output power over input which is input power times 100 percent that's how you calculate efficiency so now they already give us the input so it will be efficiency is equal to output over what? Over input, which is 8,050 times 100%. So what am I looking at? I'm looking for the output here. And for me to find the output, I need to use the information given. They are telling me that it is hoisting a lot of 50 kilograms. First things first. I need to find uh, the, uh, the the weight of the load. So the weight of the load is equal to mass times gravity, which is the mass is 50 times the gravity is 9,8. So I need to find that. So what is the weight of the load? Then I need to use my calculator there to say 50 times 9.8 is a common noun is 490 there. So it's 490 newtons so far so good i have got the weight of whatever load a crane is hoisting a load of that onto a platform which is what 15 meters high now i need to find um in this case i know i said weight i will use the small let me use a smaller w because it now look like work so the weight here is small w, is small w, or I can say the force 
of the Lord. Let's use the word F so that I don't confuse with what I want to do next. This is the force of the Lord. Now, let's look at the work done by um, this uh, crane. Remember, work done for moving the Lord is equal to, you see why I didn't want to use W? It is force times distance. Now, what is force? It's 490. Now, vertically, the Lord is moved 15 meters. So, that's the distance which is what? Which is moved. So, now, you calculate that. It will give me... Um, in this case, the work done in moving this lot is 490 times 15. It will give me 7350. What? It's Jews. See? So, in other ways, this weight of the lot is the output here. That's my output. See that? So, now I'll come to my efficiency is equal to my output, which is 7. 350 over 8050 multiply that by 100 percent then it will give me my efficiency and in this case my efficiency will be if i use my calculator it will give me an answer here of 7350 right over 8050 right i multiply by 100 then i get an answer of what 91.30 in two decimal places 91.30 so it's 91.30 percent not bad it's a very efficient crane because it's above uh, 80 percent so this is 91 percent so that's how you calculate that not difficult as such but you needed to work your way around now let us look at 4.4 in this case 4.4 4.4 it says the wheel of a car has a diameter there we go diameter of 800 millimeters a force of 1600 newton is applied at the circumference while the wheel is turning at 40 rotation per minute calculate the work rate in turning the wheel okay it's a good question interesting but let's look at this what is a few things here that you needed to be careful of uh, so that you don't get confused here they are saying there is our wheel it has a diameter this is the center what is the diameter is 800 millimeters don't forget we can now find the radius here it's 400 it's 400 so we say radius is 800 over 2 which is equal to 400 millimeters but we have to convert it so radius is 400 over 1000 remember you have to convert it to meters which is 0 0.4 meters please use a calculator for that now so far so good then the next part that we are given, we are given the force F is equal to 1,600 newtons also. That is good. And then the question is, they need to calculate the work rate. Now, remember, whenever you are dealing with the work rate of a turning wheel, you are now forced to say what is work. Work is force times distance. Now, we did mention that the distance when you are rounding circular the circumference there is 2 pi r you can use that so i'm just using this basically from the beginning then i'll cut the formulas to use whenever you're introducing tokyo so work is force times 2 which is s remember i'm linking that my s is 2 times pi there is 2 pi r it means 2 times pi times r then my work is equal to force what is my force which is 1600 times 2 times pi are you getting that and then uh, I need to be careful now because here they are saying there is a rotation of 40 revolutions or rotations per minute then I cannot ignore that I need to convert 
that 40 r per uh, per minute into second so it will be 40 over 60 i think that which is rotation per second very important one so we leave it like that now i need then to say the work it is f times 2 times pi times r and then times n0 the rotation per what that rotation per second so i multiply that by 40 over 60 i i put it there because that changes our work so our work therefore becomes I'm going to cut the formulas as I said so that you can remind if you if you, if you followed in the previous uh, lessons you'll be able in this case to to follow up what I'm doing here so it's 1600 times 2 times shift pi times we said 40 over 60 seeing that equal to then you have got what um 6 thousand seven hundred and two what this is joules remember they say calculate the work rate this is six thousand seven hundred and two joules per second six seven zero two point zero six so it's six seven zero two point zero six is joules per second that's the work rate which is in a way that's power but now let me verify my answer to ensure that i did this thing right we say it work if you're quoting the formula we say it work when you're talking about um a rotation now we said it was two actually it's force times two pi r and then we say this part here f times r is your torque which is equal to two pi t which is our tokyo and then also that is per revolution here but if you if you've got many revolutions happening is 2 pi n 0 t just re remember this formula that's the formula that we kind of defined uh, okay so now if i'm to use that formula it will be in this case w is equal to 2 times pi times n that's where now comes the part for n. It's 40 revolution per minute. But now remember minute into seconds, it's 40 over 60. You have to convert it 40 divided by per minute, meaning divided by 60, because there are 60 seconds in a minute. And then times t, what is our t? F times r. Remember t is f times r. So you're going to say times f which is 1600 times r which was 40,4. i think it comes back to the same answer if you look at what we have just done the 1600 is there um i think here this answer something is wrong here because we say it times 2 times pi we forgot r here you see so this question is actually wrong so let me actually get the right answer here it will be what in joules so let's use the right one is 2 times pi shift pi times 40 over 60 okay times 1600 times 0 0.4 so it will be a different answer now which is what which is 2680 see it's different 2680 comma 82 2680 comma 82 so it's 2680 comma 82 joules per second i think that so it is actually a different one let me just uh, sort out here i was supposed to say 1600 times 2 times pi times i was supposed to put the r which is what 40 over 60 see that times what times um 0 0.4 if i put the r so it is giving me 
2860 but now what if i just wanted to maintain to say my answer i wanted it to become here to say work in terms of joules per minute so if i i just wanted to maintain per minute it is two times pi times remember they say the rotation is what is 40 rotation per minute so i can maintain it as 40 as is and then times 1600 times 0 comma 4 then my answer here now pay attention now my answer will be 2 times pi times 40 times 1600 times 0 comma 4 look at this the answer that i'm getting here is 160,849, 160,8849. I was supposed to leave to two decimal places, but I don't remember the digits. Now it will be what? It will be joules per minute. Very important for you to put it. If you can maintain these units, it's still gonna be fine. So that's we divide by a thousand is 160,8849 kilojoules per minute so it's up to you how you want to do it even here you could have said equal to 2,68 kilojoules per second you need to maintain units what is important is you need to maintain the units so that's it guys you get done 10 marks it's worth it all right now guys join me in the last lesson i promise you this is the last i know you're tired you like too much info set the last lesson the last lesson but subscribe guys share the channel remember sharing is caring and reaching out is proof of what of passion join me again in the next lesson thank you